Hi everyone, so today I am just going to talk about expectations versus reality when living in Japan. Um, when I moved here, I was very excited about it and I understood that, um, you know, I'd be moving to another country, things were going to be different and um, some things would likely be the same because I knew I was moving from New York City to Tokyo and it's still a very big city. There's still so many different, um, people living here, but I was like, oh, there'll still be much of a difference. So in this video, I'm just going to document what my expectations were in certain categories and what the realities were of that situation. The first thing was, um, is on culture shock. I thought, oh wow, I am going from this really like American city where things are like bigger, um, the culture is different, everything is more open and very like loud <laughs> and, and passionate and all of this stuff. Um, in I just thought things were going to be so different and that wasn't the case at all. I was not surprised, I just felt a little bit let down <laughs> about the fact that things weren't very that much of a difference. Um, you still have to, um, being in Tokyo, there's, there's a lot of similarities. Um, so for example being in a space where people are speaking different languages and I have no idea what they're saying <laughs> just because that's just there are so many people from many countries living in New York and I grew up with a lot of people who had so diverse backgrounds um and even you know every section of this there are different sections of the city that just more predominantly um, maybe Korean or predominantly like Puerto Rican and they will you can hear the languages spoken so come into Japan and you will find that a lot of people don't speak English uh, luckily for me um, I was in the city so you find there is a higher chance that people could speak English in the city than of course if you were out in the boonies but I'm an hour away from the city I'm still in Tokyo but I'm an hour west of Tokyo you still get that some people are can speak English and, and now I'm learning more Japanese but it's not that much of it's like it's it's a little bit here and there and I don't feel stranded here um I thought that another expectation is on like technology I thought wow Tokyo is gonna be so advanced it's gonna be a ton of a ton of new technological advancements and I'm gonna see a ton of things I've never seen before and it's gonna be amazing interesting so in some respects that is true you know with the Shinkansen the huge bullet train um, and the the motorized toilets and all of that that's so great and it was so interesting to use um, and I mean they're not everywhere but they're definitely it's a part of the culture you definitely if you go into a department store or something you will experience um, automated toilet with like the, the bidet and everything and it's great um, but I think that and maybe you'll even see some robots but I think that's like that's it's there's sort of a contradiction or a an imbalance when it comes to technology in Japan. I feel like me personally, they there are some elements of technology that they embrace in Japan, but um, I think that they that they like to stick to the basics, um, and they're a bit more hesitant to embrace things that's happening in the Western world. Like so, for example, for my work. Um, we get like reimbursed for travel transportation transportation cost and that's amazing and I thought oh that'd be great oh I can just um but you know if you have to pay um an expense for something you need um an irregular expense you need to provide a ticket 
So at first when I heard this news, I thought, okay, cool, I can just scan the ticket and email it to them. No. They want you, and it's, this is a, it's a little thing, but it's a thing that I noticed. I was like, really? I have to use the post office to send the original receipt? That's, that, that was a big thing for me, and it seems small, but, um, I think, I hear a lot of stories often, like, in the schools, they're very, um, conservative and really hesitant about allowing ALTs to use their personal computers in the school and they want you to use like for example if you have a lesson and your lesson is you create your lesson at home on your laptop right then instead of like using your email to send it to you know someone in a school to a different email account and accessing it on on even the school's computer they, that's not a good thing like they pro prefer you to use a USB like a you like a, a flash drive like that blew my mind it's almost like flash drive um they will prefer you to use like a flash drive to um to you know um get download stuff onto their computer and it's just like a whole it it's a whole like hassle I think now in 2017 where you can use tools like Dropbox or like Google Drives to share information to have to like take a step back when you come here when in your working in terms of like communicating um, and sharing files and stuff it's like it's more of a hassle so that was a big thing um, I didn't have to do that because I just bring stuff at home and then I give them stuff but I've heard a lot about that happening and even in training they would tell us this and I'd be like really for a country that's like supposed to be super advanced in my mind there are just some little things like a little little imbalances so the next thing uh, transportation oh I thought that uh, transportation would be really similar to the New York style where you just pay one fixed rate and you're able to travel um you know from one one part of the city to another part of to like another part of the city that's maybe like two hours away but for like 275 and then you'd be good and you just have to pay and you would even have like a transfer maybe um and then you could just pay like round trip for you know going two hours away no that's not the case in Japan not only is it I mean it's more expensive because the rate in which you pay for transportation depends on where you're going so if I'm in so let's say if I'm on a train and I want to go one stop towards my main station that will only be like 184 yen or whatever but to go to and that's one way but to go to Tokyo to go to like Shibuya station it would be also I have to do transfers and all that stuff that would be like 700 yen so all I'm saying is that transportation in the city um, in Tokyo was much more expensive than I anticipated it to be um, and so that's cool let's move on to weather so I thought that the weather in um, I thought that the weather in Tokyo would be like similar to the weather on the East Coast in, Amer in the United States where there's just four seasons spring uh, summer fall and winter no, there's like two additional seasons here, uh, and those are like right after, we're like in the spring season right now, and it's March, so after the spring season is like, I can't even remember, because it's just, it's just not, it's just like bizarre to me, so it's like after the spring season, you go into the rainy season and that's where things are like really humid well actually no it's it it's not very humid it's rainy it's just wet and just gross and then it actually didn't rain that much during the rainy season it rained more during the summer season 
So after the spring, you get rainy, and then you get the summer season. Things, and when people told me how humid it would be, I just like, like, oh, I'm used to the humidity, la 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 la. No. The humidity in Tokyo, the heat in the summer was just like exhausting. I was upset. I was like, I can't go outside. I just can't do it. Um, it was just, it's so, it's super humid. Not even so much of a tie. It's just very humid. So after the summer season, then you go into the typhoon season. And that's, um, that was crazy. I mean, it wasn't very awful. It wasn't terrible. But I definitely, we had like two typhoons, um, during that time. And I was like, wow, it was torrential downpours. The skies really get bad. Um, but it was okay. It was interesting to live through. I am not used to, actually, that's a lie. I'm used to dealing with typhoons, but not to that extent. Um, and getting caught in the rain in one <laughs> was not a great experience. But you live and you learn. So after typhoon season is the fall um and then you just go into winter and so that was really interesting because I felt like um I thought that it sort of compared to the to like New York weather but it was always like delayed um there's always like a delay and so it's similar but it's not quite the same uh next travel I really wanted to come here and I thought that I would be able to do a lot of traveling. I really, really, really wanted to go to Bali and to maybe visit like Vietnam or Cambodia. And I just thought naively, oh, I just come, I'll go to Tokyo and I'll be able to make money and save money to really do a ton of traveling. And being that I was closer to these places, I would be saving more money. Um, and that just wasn't the case I was able to do traveling thank goodness I made it a priority um to do this because it's something that was really important to me so I was able to travel within Japan with um you know when there's a long weekend or if there was a holiday and I went to Taiwan and that was just I actually really love Taiwan and I'm so happy that I was able to have the opportunity um but it just hit me that I wasn't, with, in moving to Japan, I wasn't taking some big vacation. I was moving and I was living and I was working and earning money here. So I actually, I had a job that I had to go to from Monday through Friday. I, um, and it's like, it was full time, although I wasn't getting paid full time, but it was, I, my time wasn't, wasn't as open and flexible as I imagined or expected it would be and so that was a big um change for me um but you live and you learn and I'm glad that I was able to do I was able to explore parts of Japan even with like full-time work and you know you really have to make sure that you take care of yourself and um make what you want also a priority you know, take those, maybe make an extra weekend and a longer weekend on Mondays and Tuesdays so that you're able to take in bits of some traveling um, and spend where you can and be really flexible with that. Uh, next one, friendships. I did not, you know, um, like they said on America's Net Top Model, I didn't come here to make friends. No, no, no. I didn't come here thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to really seek out this huge group of friends and it'll be amazing and fun I was like mm, it'll be great if it'll be cool if I met people but I wasn't really expecting to expecting to and um I wasn't really pursuing it but I I liked that you know in joining groups Facebook groups and like meetup.com and using these resources um and even you know uh, communicating with people in the company that I work for I was able to just hang out with people and um, really establish friendships with people from different countries and a lot of Americans too that are out here. <laughs> um, and even, you know, traveling to Taiwan and Taipei, just meeting other people there. 
um it was really cool just to connect and I'm an introvert so I don't go around talking too much anyway so I take extra special like attention um, and even more appreciative when I can make connections with people because I can be a little crazy money uh, this is with money I felt felt like I knew I wasn't gonna be making a ton of money I knew I was gonna take a pay decrease pay cut when I moved to Japan um, and I was I was okay with that because I was expecting more um, traveling and it was all about the experience for me so money um, it the real I knew what the reality was but at the same time I was still like oh maybe I'd still make enough to do things but I underestimated specifically the cost of transportation in this city is wild um, so cost of transportation and even the cost and I mean cost of transportation not only to get to Tokyo but to travel within Japan and also to travel like um, to the other countries within around Asia because yeah it's closer but you still gotta shell out the big butts so I also embraced like the low airfare travel um air, air airliners like peach um but majority peach but you know you can also look at scoot vanilla air and all of these other flights um and I've had fine experiences with, with them before just make sure you don't miss your flight because then you just have to pay another um another fee I learned my lesson time spent here I did um coming here I I was really open to whether I would be here for or how long I would be here for I decided you know to see how the first year went and if I didn't like it I would come back go back to America or if I did I would stay here longer <laughs> Within a few months, I, I realized Japan, I don't really like it here. So I decided after, you know, four months, I definitely wouldn't renew for a second year. Um, and, you know, that's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors to that. Maybe I can delve into that um, next time, but um, in a different video. But I... Um, the reality was I didn't like it here and so now after a year I am heading back to the States and relocating to Philadelphia and I'm excited for that experience and I definitely have been written off living abroad but in another country again. So that is my expectations versus reality video. Let me know is there was there ever a time where you know, you made a big move, even if it's like local, where you made a big move and there were expectations um, that you had and you were really looking forward to it. And then it just didn't work out. Um, and you had like, it was such a interesting reality or just a, a huge shift that you had to make because of it. Or maybe it was the opposite. Maybe you, your expectation about a big move or something in your life that you felt so, so about and then when you pursued it, um, you had really great rewards from that. Um, I'd really like to hear that, um, I'd really love to hear your experience and your take on it. Let me know if you have any questions about my experience. Um, or if you'd like to learn more about why I'm leaving. And I will see you next time. Bye.